Hey, doing everyone? Welcome back to normal fantasy analysis. In this one, I just want to go through the Friday night games. But just firstly, I'm seeing a lot of comments in my in my comments section there on YouTube, um, on Discord, and also in Facebook groups, just around you know all the guys that have done well and. Yeah, these are all the guys I want to get into my squad next week. Remember, you do only have two trades, and remember that you picked certain guys for a reason. And a lot of these guys that you are probably thinking about trading out already, you haven't even seen play yet. You know, it could be something as simple as, oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't bring in Tago, I don't have Billy Walters, um, and yeah, you're looking at guys like Panasini or Billy Smith or all these kind of guys and going, oh, I'm trading them out straight away next week. Remember. They can come out and get 50, 60 as well. They can get 40, um, and even if you know if they do come out and get a 35, it's only you know, 15 or you know, 20 points behind some of these other guys. And it is round one. You know, there's every chance that someone like Tago could come out and get 33 next week. You could come out and get 25 if they get beat. You know, he had a perfect game, for example. Billy Walters had a really good game also, and we're not even sure if he's going to be playing next week. So. There's a lot of things to think about with all of these guys, and you know, even we're going to talk about Lockie Lewis in a sec, but with him, yes, he had a bad game, but remember, we're picking a lot of these guys to play in our 17 based around the fact that they're probably going to have a, a strong game, obviously, but their team's going to have a strong game, and you know, everyone would have thought Rabdos were going to do well in that game, and they had scored four points, and, and he you know, didn't get involved as much, he missed a bunch of tackles. Remember, he's super young, okay? These are things we've got to think about when we're looking to possibly trade out a lot of these guys from our team. So, on that note, just relax. Hopefully, um, here is your voice of reason after each week or each game. You know, it is round one. It's obviously really exciting, but let's just simmer down a little bit. Guys that get massive scores in first round, no, don't often get massive scores in the second round. If they score a try, yes, they're going to score. They're going to score well that game. You know, they're going to get twenty points from that try and then whatever base they get from that. So, just relax and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. All right, let's go. Raiders and Sharks. So we start with Teague, Teague Wilton, and he had an awesome game. He, he got the try. He got the line break. It was a really good, nice line run. Um, great pass from Nico Hines, for example. Other thing to mention, guys, is all of the offloads haven't updated in the NL Fantasy app. So they should update um, by the end of the round or sometime through this week. We're not exactly sure. Obviously, it's a new rule, and they forgot to add it into the NRL Fantasy system. But it is on your NRL.com stats. So if you jump in and look at the games, you'll see that, you know, Teague, for example, is a little bit higher. They've given, um, you know, Heinz, uh, what's he got, 53, 51 on here and 53 in the, um, in the uh, uh, sorry, on NRL.com, for example. So we'll have a uh, chat through them later. We're just letting you know early that a lot of these guys are a little bit higher than what they may seem. Hudson Young, 58. So sorry, we'll talk, finish with Teague. Um, obviously a great game. If he's, you know, playing 80 minutes every week and getting the odd try, he'll have games like this, but he'll also have games around the 45 mark. So, just be aware of that, that, you know, 484 is going to start, you know, making a bit of cash now, but he has to keep up, you know, the try scoring to, to make a lot of cash. So, you know, 484 is priced over 40 and, you know, he has to be scoring anywhere between that 46 to 50 on a regular basis to keep making you cash. So if you started with him, awesome work. If you didn't, just probably hold off. Hudson Young again as well, so 58 with a try. And, you know, if he, he played the full 80 and he wouldn't have got anywhere near that uh, if he didn't score that try right at the end. So just be aware of that if you're looking at him next week. But the 80 minutes is really cool. Blake Braley looked great. I loved his running at the start of the game and obviously got a little try in there as well. Um, question, where's the where's the line break? If that's not a line break out of the scrum, I'm dead. Like, what, I don't understand that. Anyway, um, that's that. Braley, solid, 570K. You know, he's, he's priced in the mid-40s, mid to high 40s. So, you know, if he takes away that try, which is going to be normal, and he, he had an awesome game, I, I wouldn't be looking at him personally. Fanukin had a really good game. 64 minutes, 45 tackles for no misses. Just the one penalty conceded there, 78 metres. So he had a really good game. Will he play 64 most weeks? I'm not exactly sure, but um, yeah, he, he showed some great potential as a as a guy that's going to do a lot of work for the Sharks. But remember, they did also um, they did also have uh, a lot less ball, especially in that first half. So he did a lot of tackling early. Jack White looked great. Did a bit of everything. You had the 18 tackles there, the five tackle breaks, running the ball well for 142 meters, 220 kick meters as well. So splitting that with with Bradley Schneider was solid, and he should be averaging somewhere around that 50 to 55, I'd say. So probably a tiny bit upside, but yeah, really good to see the Raiders play well in general, and that's probably my consensus of this game. Raiders played pretty well. Sharks had a pretty bad first half. The amount of offloads in that first one, they just couldn't tackle them, couldn't hold on to them. So. Yeah, both teams were pretty solid this year. I reckon close to that top eight. So that's that for that one. Papali'i was very solid with the 52. Just doing a bit of everything, right? 
a few offloads, a um, few tackle breaks, he'll get a couple extra points for those offloads. Nico Hines, you know, for a game where they didn't play very well, he didn't do anything spectacular. He got tries, his three goals, you know, three tackle breaks, 19 tackles for three misses was okay. He runs the ball and he kicks as well. So really happy with his output. You know, he hits his he hits his price target anyway. So you know, nothing too stressed uh, to be to be too stressed about, and he'll improve from there. Uh, CHN was solid at 47 and 58 minutes, not too bad. Um, Schneider is probably the one we want to talk about with the 44. So he was super solid, 31 tackles and one miss. He was actually really solid in defence. Uh, you know, a few there where he it was either one on one or you know just two on one there, and held his own in defence even though he's a small guy. 240k, everyone needs to have him in his side. I uh, liked his goal kicking. Yeah, it's really you know much better stroke than what Hines did, for example. So he'll he'll stay in the team solely. You know, no, he played well, but solely to do with that goal kicking because he was um he was really good there. Ran the ball a little bit, which was cool, and kicked a little bit. So a little bit of everything. Uh, really happy with how Schneider went round one. Tarpany, okay, a lot of people have been talking about him. He did look great in his you know even out there. Yes, he's going to get a couple extra points for the for the offloads that he had, but you know mid forties. When you're getting him at 579k, is not good enough, right? We're, we're wanting we're wanting in the mid 50s for him, and he's someone that's going to get a 41, and he's going to score a try, and he's going to get a 70. So just be aware of that, and that's something that you know he looks amazing every year. We come to round one, round two, round three, and he's got a you know decent score and a couple of you know, a couple of average scores in there as well. So be aware of that. Nakora, this is very similar to what you know he's produced over the years. Obviously, he didn't get a lot of running, so you know we saw we saw what we saw in the trials was. A lot better than what we saw in round one from him. He'll be better. He got the six missed tackles, so um, don't stress too much about Nakora. If you if you have him, I'd be sticking solid. Of course, I will have a laugh about this. Is you know I was very much thinking of of just running Randall in round one, and then either going and then going to Grant or something like that in round two, uh, trading someone else, um, and then Starling, you know, comes in and, and plays almost a full game with Hodgson looking to be out with some kind of meniscus MCL injury. Uh, could be about six weeks. So Starling becomes a solid option. He didn't have a great game himself, you know, four tackle breaks, 39 tackles, four misses. Did have one try assist, but didn't run the ball as much as normal. So he'll be averaging somewhere in the 50s over the next over the next you know, bunch of weeks if he's getting that start and getting 80 minutes. So be aware of that. He could be a decent option if you didn't start with a gun, for example. Um, but he could also be solid off the bench as well as a pretty safe option. Like if he played, got 40 and didn't play that well. Okay, the Hawes Brats seem to play a few extra minutes with a couple of guys uh, going off with some HIAs. Obviously, Hodgson not playing through the middle as well. So expect Hawes to be somewhere in the mid-30s minutes, but he's also always a, a solid scorer. Someone I was really impressed with was uh, Matty Tomoko. Eight tackle breaks there. He's very, very electric running the ball. Uh, very similar to, to Kotrick. You know, that edge there with Kotrick himself um, you know, and Whiten, for example, to go along with Hudson Young is really, really strong. Uh, and I can see them going that way a lot. And yeah, Tomoko being a bit of a beneficiary. Him at 445k though is that's a little bit too expensive, I think, when he's priced just you know at about that 37, 38 to to do very well for your squad. And yeah, when when there's a lot of gun, sorry, a lot of good centers at cheap prices, I'd probably leave him out. You know, Charles Nickel Cookstar had a solid game without being amazing, 37 points. This is very normal for him, being priced in the mid 30s there. You know, not too much value I see with him, and yeah, we've had a, a bit of a chat about that over the the, bunch, the last bunch of weeks anyway. Moylan did his thing, Kotrick was 31, was okay, so you get a little bit of value out of him, but uh, not too much being priced at about that 30 mark. So he was okay with the line break try assist, but yeah, 57 meters is not good enough for him. If he can get a little bit more uh, running meters, then yeah, that four tackle breaks will increase dramatically with the odd offload as well. So I wouldn't be too stressed about him. If you started with Mr. James Schiller, you get a 28, and I think he was pretty solid to be fair. You know, 59 running meters is probably not enough, but five tackle breaks in that 59 was really, really cool. And if you have got him, I'd you know I'd be happy with how he went, and and hopefully he can keep his spot and be that sort of dual position cover as well for your side. If you look a little bit lower, we've got Kennedy with a try and a line break. Just didn't really have much of a game. You know, they didn't obviously play well at the start, so he didn't get to do too much. 73 meters, two tackle breaks with the line break and try only for 24. Unfortunately, it wasn't good enough. So. That's that for Kennedy. If you own him, I'd be looking to hold for sure. You know, it is one week, so don't stress too much with that. Um, and then we've got Elliot, for example, with 53 minutes for 21. So he'll improve on that for sure. But at 598k, we'll, we'll just watch him over the over the next month or so and see how much cash he loses. Because if he gets an opportunity somewhere in, in that pack, especially on an edge, if there's an injury to a, a Hudson Young, an Elliot Whitehead, um, or a, C, uh, a CHN, then then he could be a decent option. So just keep an eye out on him for the next little bit. 
Ramian, luckily, is, is someone I told people to, to stay away from at the start. I just didn't see the value in him, and, and a 13 is going to be pretty tough. He'll have a game you know, in, a, in a week or two, which will get 60 and score a try or two. But yeah, the, the five missed tackles um, wasn't ideal for only the 42 run meters. So you can see a lot of the run meters guys came from a, a bunch of the guys in the middle and, and obviously a couple of the halves as well in, in Nico and, and Whiten. A few of those edges going over 100 as well. But yeah, very interesting to see the run meters probably down a little bit on last year just with the the new um, the new kicking uh, sorry the new penalty rule for example in your in your bottom forty so yeah you're starting forty there to, to kick out um, to touch on that one it was very um, interesting to see those those meters down which we'll have a look at the next game and see if that uh, is a trend that's starting to happen for sure. All right, if you haven't liked this video, please do so. Really appreciate it. Thanks for being here, guys. Broncos and the Rabbitohs. So again, the Offloads is uh, not updated here. So Payne Haas should be at the 84 mark. Uh, if you captained him, the 71 minutes. Actually, you know, when, when he got the HIA, I was like, please, like if he's actually okay, which it looked like he was, because he got hit in the back, right? If he's actually okay, it, it, it covered, uh, I think it was the last night, yeah, the last nine minutes before half, and then he gets that extra time at half time to recover, uh, and then get to that 15 minutes and come straight back on and probably play the rest of the game. And that's exactly what happened. And yeah, Payne Haas, we spoke about him being such a, a clear option in uh, as captaincy. And if you picked him up, then then well done. And if you captained him, even better. Uh, but yeah, the four offloads, a couple of turnover tackles. When, you, when you're making 45 as a big boy, then um, it's obviously a pretty good chance that you're going to get the odd turnover tackle as well. And he's just a superstar. He got, he's one missed tackle right near the end of the game. So just never really does anything wrong. Thankfully for me, I had the top two scorers in this game. And I hope that um, you know, a bunch of you guys picked up Arrow and, and, and went for that decision. I'm, I'm really happy with how the setup went. You know, Starting on the edge, he was actually really, really slow. So seven in about 25 minutes, I believe. And then moving to the edge, he, you know, sorry, moving to the middle, he, he scored over a point a minute for the next sort of, um, you know, the next section of time until he, he went off at about you know, 60 minutes that he played. And I thought that was about it for him at that 55 mark and then came on for another, um, another 12 minutes to finish. And picked up another sort of seven points there, so he was really really cool. I was really happy with um with Jai. Uh, so he should be getting 64, I believe, and and the minutes there. You know, we, we spoke about Jaden Sewer playing you know, around that 70 minutes on the edge, and and for Arrow, it's going to be even better with him you know, starting on the edge and then moving through the middle. They bring on they brought on Jacob Host on that edge, so yeah, really happy with that pick up in the dual position. Yeah, uh, for those people that already said, "Oh, I got to buy, J I got to buy Arrow," you don't have to buy him, right? He's going to be he's priced at forty three now. He's going to go up to about a forty five price after that 62, 44, 45 price. So I expect him to be somewhere around the fifty mark in scoring. So they're only about a five or six point uh, in value there for for your for your squad, and probably someone that's not worth a trade in. He's nice to start with because you get that little bit of a uh, little bit of a bonus with some decent scoring, that bonus in price. Uh, but he's not someone that I'd be looking to target, especially at this stage. Obviously, you know, look, uh, look at it all, you know, from Monday and Tuesday when when team lists and stuff are out. But yeah, a really happy one there if you decide to pick him up. Well done, Kelly, Capewell, and Turpin, all guys that we didn't want, probably didn't want to talk about too, like didn't want to pick up too much. Capewell is a decent option. Obviously, got the uh, the field goal, um, fifty four meters was not, not ideal, and a lot of tackling in this game. You can see the the, the first sort of bunch of guys here: forty three tackles, forty, forty five, and forty two. So plenty of back and forth in this one, being a low scoring one, you know, the ball in play a lot more. These type of middles um, are going to do well. And the halves, especially with the kick meters, for example, with Kelly. So doing a bit of everything there. Be interesting to see who keeps that spot, but these kick meters are going to go massive down, massively down. Uh, let's go with Damien Cook. And 53 in his 80 minutes was, you know, a solid effort without doing too much. This is, you know, I'm really happy that he ran the ball a lot more at 118 metres gained, but you know, the 43 tackles for two misses is completely normal for him. Just no attacking stats in terms of try assists or tries. And, and this is cool. If he can get the 53s, you know, Cook has that big chance of getting somewhere between the 75 to 85 pretty comfortably um, when he gets that 80 minutes. So good to see he got that 80 there, and I wouldn't be stressing too much about Damien Cook if you brought him in. You know, he's priced at 60, so you lose a tad on that, but that's okay. Um, for a gun, as long as they're not injured uh, and getting around that 50 plus mark, you're doing okay. Remember, people captain Tommy Trebojevic and picked him up for a million, right? So yeah, you're not too stressed there. All right, Carrigan, 53. He was really solid. I, you know, he was at over a point a minute for his first stint there. Uh, so he was really cool. But at 550, uh, 588K, you need him to be hitting 55 plus. So yeah, a really good game for him. And he still only got 53. That minute is going to be pretty normal for him around that 57. So keep that in mind if you're looking to pick him up. 
Billy Walters, he was awesome, wasn't he? I actually think he might have been close to earning his spot, as good as Kelly uh, Kelly was. I think Kelly has more more of a better opportunity playing fourteen. I think he he would do okay in that in that role, and he can be like a second kicker and and come on and, and be that tough guy through the middle, run the ball a lot. Um, but Billy Walters really ran the ball nice. He had a nice left foot step, got through the line closely, you know, pretty close a few times. And, you know, tackles well also, 24 tackles. He likes to rip in six tackle breaks and a couple of offloads. He'll get up to about 53, I believe, and a little bit of kicking. So <clears throat> for Billy, I think he was um, I think he was great. And if you started him you know, in your top 17, then awesome. I personally had him in number five emergency, so that was great. <laughs> um, and played Ilias over him. But yeah, there, there's no way to expect that Broncos were going to come out and, and beat the Rabbitohs. But, you know, it shows that obviously they're missing Reynolds for sure. All right, Cam Murray, 46. A lot of people ask me, you know, what are your thoughts on him? That 58 minutes is, is the issue with Cammy. You know, it's very hard to get, when you're priced at, you know, in, in a 60 mark, it's very hard to get that point a minute over that amount of time. So, you know, some games you'll play longer minutes and sometimes he won't. Awesome. Something went wrong. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's very hard to do that. And, and he's coming off some surgery. So that was the reason for not picking him up too much at this stage. Palaszczuk was the interesting one at 4.16. He was, you know, very close to, I think it was 40 and 45 minutes and then kind of slowed down a little bit at the end. But he's someone that obviously got some bigger minutes. They do have a couple of guys to come back with Flegler, for example. So he might take that starting, you know, that, that bigger minute role. Jackson Paulo was interesting. He, he, he's going to pick up a 40 and, you know, got a try saver, uh, a try assist and a couple of line break assists and, and a goal attempt in there, which is cool. Actually, two goal attempts and missed the last one. Uh, but he was um, he was pretty solid. He kind of he was one of the only South guys that had a, a pretty decent game. Both centers went all right, forty six and thirty eight for for Paulo and Graham respectively. So yeah, he was solid. If you picked him up at three twenty seven, you're, you're pretty happy with his forty for sure. I wouldn't be looking to pick him up. Just yeah, you know, he'll go up to about three hundred and fifty k after this one. All right, Cobo. I think he was really really nice to to watch. Like that that in and away that he did on the on the wing was awesome. Um, and it was nice to hear that he, you know, I saw him on Bloke in a Bar just before, that he you know, is, is the one to, to stay around and, and hang out with all the fans after the games and stuff. So really cool for a young fella to just be really grateful and um, you know, respectful to all these fans and, and everyone that wants to you know, talk to him because he's a, he's a bright young uh, star in our game. And, and um, yeah, really good to see how, how well he played. What's he had the six, you know, six missed tackles there? Six errors, actually. What? <laughs> six errors. Holy moly. Didn't see that. So he actually would have had a much better game if he you know, got a few of those errors out of his, out of there. But he was um he was great to watch and a good win for the Broncos. <coughs> Moving down a little bit lower. So Ricky went off after you know, 65 minutes. So he's going to get a little bit cheaper, which is cool for a bit later in the season when you know Reynolds is back and and um yeah feeding him some good ball. For example, Ryan James, someone that you know people were interested in, and we'll, we'll stay away from him at that uh, at that minute space at 35, and might even get less with um with Flegel coming back. Cody Walker didn't have a great game. Just didn't get his you know, standard tackle breaks. Didn't run the ball as much. Didn't kick the ball 228 meters. So a few more than uh, what Ilias did, for example, which is a little bit concerning. But it was more just the um, the type of game I'd expect. You know, Cody to, in the first few games of Ilias's you know, starting role in the team that the Walker would take control a bit more. But they didn't play very well um, and should be improving from there anyway. Uh, Katoni Staggs with 18. So it'd be cool to see if you don't own him. His price to get a little bit lower and he can become interesting. Same with Herbie Farmworth. So two really good players just um, weren't able to get into this game too much, which happens sometimes in these low-scoring ones. Okay, Lockie Elias. So we talk about him as someone that had 18 tackles and five misses, a couple of errors as well. So the, obviously it wasn't his night, right? They scored four points, only one try. And you know, the 50 the 50 run meters is, is you know, something nice to see. If you're yeah, looking at 15 in demerit points, so there's, you know, he did get um, the one offload, so he will end up on 20 points. So there's 35 that he could have potentially had without any attacking stats. Yes, the, the five tackle breaks is a little bit high. You, know, you might be averaging a three to four. The error rate might be, you know, down to one. So I'd expect just, you know, as a base there with the 18 tackles, three misses, one error, and maybe that negative one in a, in a you know, penalty there, a uh, six again. I'd expect him, his base to be around that mid 20s. And then some upside in some try assists and stuff as well as the Rabbitohs begin to get better as a, as a squad. So, you know, that's his first game, guys. Just be aware of that. Okay, maybe you don't want to start him next week. But at 300k, you had to bring him into the side. As a starting half, he has the position. You know, no one's going to steal that position off him. He didn't play that bad to lose his spot. So he's going to be there for the next period. I'd be holding steady. If you don't want to play him in your 17 next week, that is okay. But just 
breathe, right? Picking him to start in your 17 over Walters was not a stupid decision, right? You got to think of it like that. Yes, you got a bit unlucky and you started, you know, I, personally, I started Ilias over Walters, but it's not something that's going to ruin your season. As much as, you know, leaving Tago in number six, for example, on your emergencies feels bad. If you didn't pick up one of these guys that scored really well, it feels bad. But one of your other players can do better. And if they don't, you can just make the quick trade and in round two and get that person in that it appears to be a must-have or something like that. So just be aware of that, guys, heading into the rest of the round. We've got some great games in the next few hours. We've got Roosters in an hour and a half uh, against the Knights, and then we've got two more games to come. So I hope you enjoy all that, and we'll catch you in the next video tomorrow, guys. Have a great day.